Welcome everybody. We're here at um, LSU Farm and Training with uh, Dwight Williams and kind of an old pro in, in the uh, in the fire world. You know, he's been very successful in extinguishing many fires around the world. I think Dwight's some hundred plus fires all around the world. You've seen a lot of countries and a lot of places. Met a lot of interesting people. So. Yeah, yeah, we're glad you're here. Also with us is John Snyder. John uh, was a former fire chief of Marathon Petroleum just south of here. Uh, John, you were there for 32 years and also was a, uh, a fire chief at a, a rural fire department, or a big fire department, I should say, just south of the plant facility in, in La Plata. So you were fire chief there for a number of years. So uh, today we're here just talking about a discussion about foam and foam and uh, topics in general. Uh, fluorine foam is, I guess, a big topic today around the world about you know people's different opinions about fluorine foam and, and what to use, what not to use, and so it's just kind of a general discussion here today about you know what you know what are, what are the different types of foam and fluorine foam, non-fluorinated foam, and you know it's been some very very interesting discussions around the world about uh, you know that topic, and I guess we were talking earlier that uh, you know you have fought many fires with four ring foam and and you're 71 and, and you're still fine and healthy and you were swimming in that stuff just about in the early days both you and your daughter and, and children and yeah. you're still healthy and fine and, and right. your hair is not falling off and everything's good 50 plus years of marriage right there you go that's right you know congratulations on that so so what's, what's your thought of uh, fluorine foam? Uh, I guess we'll get on that topic first, Dwayne. Well, I think you have to look at how it's tested versus how uh, a fluorinated foam is tested. You have to use an application rate in the test, UL allows, right at 50% greater application rate. Plus, instead of extinguishing fire in three minutes, you get to go for five. So it's definitely not a drop-in replacement. If you have a system or you have a fire truck and you're, you're figuring things on the application rate, and a lot of fire chiefs still today will look at it and say, well, that's a two or three holes fire. I mean, we still see that. Well, if, if you're saying it's a two holes fire, then you better lay three. Uh, John and I's opinion is if you need three, lay four. Uh, Never give a fire a chance if you keep from it because it's not going to give you a chance. So I think that the, there's some naivety in the industry that it's a drop in replacement. It's not. It has absolutely no history at all of extinguishment on a major fire. We all know that we put out 270 footers, that's a big fire with the floor net foam. Prior to that, we put out 150 footer. Uh, three of the bigger fires in the history of the United States and probably the world have happened on this Mississippi River on the Hunts. 89, we had 14 storage tanks on fire, four API separators, some process area on fire, some pipe bands on fire. That was all done uh, with the fluorinated foam. CNN came on and said it was going to burn for four days. We had to fire out in 14 and a half hours. Uh, it is truly a far better proven product and there's no health issues that have been confirmed. So we have a product that, that we're seeing uh, become politically involved somehow and we have environmental people that are, that are not happy with it for whatever reason. But I can tell you this, a man whose job it is to put the dead gum fire out wants the best he can get. And industry owes the firefighter the best hose, the best phone, the best equipment that they can give them because they got a tough job. Uh, that's my opinion. And uh, now, five years from now, if there's a, a, a flooring free phone that's better than what we got, and there's no, no political concerns with it, I'm all for it. I don't have a problem with it. Uh, if there was a pill that you could throw over the top of the tank and put it out, I have no problem with that. But there's not. So what's the next best thing? Right now, that's a floor uh, foam with a polymer or a product in it that allows it to flow on alcohol, so you put alcohol fires out with it as well. That's what the industry needs. 
and it needs to work in an expansion that will allow you to get it on the fire, throw it at long distances. They're going to take a non-fluorinated foam, they're going to expand it 15, 12 to 1, and say, see, it's, it's really pretty good stuff. But you can't throw it very far, and you sure can't throw it through a thermal updraft. So we have people that are telling people what they should use that never have used it on the fire. It's, it's kind of like rules of engagement. We got people writing rules of engagement for military, for Marines and paratroopers to engage the enemy that have never been shot at. If they were getting shot at, they'd write different rules. That's how I feel about it. I would probably talk too long. I'm sorry about that, John. So, John, what's your opinion? I know you've been around and fought many fires in your lifetime. And yeah, and, and I guess, you know, to, to Dwight's point about the uh, application, so if you're going to take a fluorine free foam and you got to add 50% to it or another 100%, I'm hard pressed on a 325 foot of the flow, 20,000 gallons a minute, much less 30 or 40,000 so gallons. Else. Yeah, so, you know. So, so stop right there. People really don't realize. So it's double the amount of the water, double or triple the amount of the manpower, That's right. triple the amount of the hose lay. So, I mean, from a practicality awesome. standpoint, it's almost impossible to, to provide that type of equipment on a fire scene in a small location, in a narrow location, typically in a plant, to lay all this equipment to put this fire on. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, I, I think you're going to see more and more tank fires when they do happen, burn to the ground because of the, you know, the fluorine-free foams having to, to, you know, double this application rate, and, and most people can't get the current application rates that that's they right. need. Hard for us to get current. That, that's right. Yeah, yeah, but let's look at it another way. I mean, as some experts may say, or some chemists, and I think it gets back to your analogy, says, well, that's not true, you know, so they, you know, that they, they can develop a, a fluorine-free foam. They had not No, and, and, and so, yeah, but I think, it's, I think it's back to, down the road, maybe. But. Yeah, but I think it's back to Dwight's point, is, is, you know, this man and both of your gentlemen sitting here have done this for many, many years, and in the real world, it's another issue versus that somebody comes up with an idea that, you know, thinks it's going to work, you know, so the application is, is just really not out there to make this firefighting business, you know, really work at this time with the 9 4 well, firefighting business is a, is a family. If you've ever fought fire with people, and you've ever put your life on that with them, and people who fight fires, uh, for the most part, are volunteers, and they care for each other's safety. And they will take risk for whoever it is they work for and for their self-pride. They do that. You've done it. Yep. You've seen us do it. We're going to take some risk, okay? Is that good or bad? Well, uh, very honestly, if you don't put a crew tank fire out and it boils over, you may very well kill people. You may very well set more tanks on fire. So you, you evaluate that risk, and it's either acceptable or it's not. The risk that you evaluate with a product that is half as good is going to be a lot less risk. If, if I was a young man today and I was fighting fire, I wouldn't take the same risk. I've been in a boat in gasoline twice to shoot out pressure fires with a AFFF that was fluorinated. Didn't think anything about it. Would I do it with, with a non-fluorinated foam? No. Why? Because that blanket doesn't hold the hydrocarbon vapor and extinguish the fire fast enough for me to risk something like that. I'm not going to do it. And I sure wouldn't put my son or my son-in-law or somebody like a friend in that same harm for way we do it. Yeah, I know you were talking when we were off camera about the incident that you had with the, the military on an aircraft carrier that, uh, you know, they couldn't even extinguish the fire and y'all called in to to put out the fire, but I think it was a different mill spec that had, you know, lesser grade. That's right. During the fall of Pinellas, it was a, it was actually a crew carrier, and they had two naval vessels that attended the fire, trying to put it out, and couldn't. And of course, being an old paratrooper, I enjoyed handing their gear back down to them after we put the fire out. Right, right. And uh, they wanted to know, they called us to Washington, wanted to know why we could do it, and they asked us, and they could And I told them, I said, well, the product that you're using is a less of a product than we're buying. You're buying a cheap 
mill spec. They had lowered the mill spec specification so they could buy it from somebody that other people could bid on. Well, they went back after they learned why they went back and bought it from 3M at that time. It was a really good product. And the purpose of extinguishing fires on aircraft carriers is to keep our country free. That means our grandkids don't have to speak Russian or Chinese. And for us to provide uh, the military with anything other than the world's best is wrong. And it's wrong to provide our firefighters with anything other than what's best. And yeah, Chris, one other point that Dwight made about the fluorine-free foams is that, you know, you have to expand it. You know, so there's really no big gun nozzle out there that can expand foam 15 to 1. No, not that I know of. That's right. You know, so, and, and again, how are you going to throw the foam great distances, four or five hundred feet? In a the thermal air, column, that's just unbelievable. That, that's that's a, a big bubble, thin wall bubble, you and try it. to get it to sit on the uh, foamable liquid surface. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. They don't make them out there. Sure, you can develop nozzles, but then how are you going to throw that foam those distances? Well, it's, it's an old story of people telling you what to do that flat don't know. Yeah, but I think some other discussions that we heard just recently saying that, you know, some of the plant managers are in some areas, you know, don't want to buy any more fluorine free type or fluorine fluoridated foam, right. you know, simply because of uh, the exposure. Uh, but, you know, when you look at a situation that, uh, you know, you spoke of a ball over or even the environmental impact of just letting the product burn, you'll have more environmental impact with other chemicals in the smoke and the, you know, the fallout than you would. You know, lose jobs too. I mean, I, I've seen as many as 14 tanks burn at one time. Uh, it happens. I've seen one tank blow over and set six other ones on fire. That happens. Um, a lot of it doesn't even make the news like it should. But <clears throat> the plant managers, you know, it's their job to come up with a, a good business plan. But they really need to talk to people that know a little bit about fires. And the question goes back to what exposure do you really have to this? Has anybody been sick? If you do a sample on water, also test it for nickel, lead, uh, poisons from herbicides. There's everything in this water, especially by the time it gets them. The Yankees up there in Pennsylvania or, or Minnesota all the way down to Louisiana, that water's been used several times. There's no telling what's in the water. Right, correct. So don't just check for one thing. Tell so us check what's everything. Check lead, check everything. Tell, tell us what's in the damn water. Right, right. So, so John, anything uh, else you want to add, I mean, to this discussion? Well, I think right now, you know, the, the, the C8 foams that are still out there that people still have in inventory and the C6s that are, have been developed, right now that's that's our only choice in foams. You know, until they come out with a fluorine-free foam, that, work. That, that'll work. That'll pass the test that we can use it through uh, equipment that we have out there right now on the market. Uh, you, you know, you're just not going to not buy anything and, and let the fire let the fire burn itself the, out. The oil company is almost better off buying insurance than they are yeah. for non-fluorinated foam. They're better off to say, look, we're going to do what we can to protect everything, we're going to buy insurance. It makes more sense. Then they're not putting people at risk, at least on the fire line. Yeah, but I guess that's some of the earlier conversation that uh, people were, were saying that, hey, you know, we're, we're just going to try to contain the fire. You know, we're just going to try to, to attempt to put the fire out. And even though we're lessening, lessening our exposure, we're just, we're going to attempt to just let it burn Except out. Except the control burn. Except the control but burn. But you're not going to do that on crude oil. No. Correct. But all the other products, finished products, sure, you can do that. You can protect the surrounding tanks. You can put put cooling water on that tank shell and just accept the control burn and you know two or three days later, a week later, it's down to the ground and you yeah. know you go clean it up. And, and but, John, you probably know this, a control burn really is a fire that you hope like hell's not going to get any bigger, but right. you can't put it out. That's right. That's where control Yeah, burn. but again, look, look at the exposure of the community. I mean, you have a big fire going on and, and, and a crude oil tank is, even though that you're 
attempting to put it out, the thing's going to burn for days. I mean, it depends on the gallonage of the tank, surely, but it's going to really, you know, your, your exposure of the atmosphere and then toxics coming off with the smoke. If you, look, if you just look at this thing logically and you say, what is the positive things over here, what's the negative things over here? It is just plain cowboy logic to buy a fluoridated foam. If you look at this over here, it makes absolutely no sense. Number one, the oil companies are not going to go in and replace this system they got on this big tank and put in more pipe and more pumps and buy more product and have a Chinese chance in hell put the fire out. They're not going to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Every fixed and semi-fixed system is going to have to be redesigned. It's got to be re redesigned. Yeah. Re yeah. Redesigned the whole thing. Yeah. People have a logically looked at the damn cost that's going to be there. Yeah, but again, you know, back to the discussion, there's, there's, you know, people out there saying that, you know, they produce a fluorine-free foam that does the job. And, and, and I think our discussion here today is... No, they uh, don't. No, they don't. Yeah. There's a word for that in Texas, so I won't use it right now. <laughs> but Cheryl, you, you can talk about the, you know, the discussion real quick, too, of you know, how foam is tested and in turn how you will. Um, and keep in mind, you pass the test one time, you test 300, you get a listing. Right, correct. A lot of people don't know that. And they wonder why it won't put a fire out. Well, it didn't 300 times, but it didn't want. Two, 299 times. It yeah, once in a row. Here we go. Right. One time it did, so. We, we tested flame flaps today three times. One was 24, one was 25, one was 23. That's fairly dead gum consistent. Correct, on flame plants. On flame plants. So we, we come up with 24 is probably a good number. Yeah. And that was, uh, that probably leads us into another discussion, but that was the best we had today. Correct. So again, I think there's a lot of uh, discussion going on around the world. I guess, uh, you know, we talk to a lot of people from uh, all around the world on a daily basis about this phone discussion. I'm sure it's going to continue on for a while. So again, we just wanted to get together and, and just have to start some discussion about that. And, and uh, surely, I mean, some people may agree and some people are going to disagree like everybody does on a daily basis. But everybody's got to you know, I guess when I look at this, uh, you know, you're the expert, John, you're the expert. You've done it for many, many years, and, and surely uh, you've been very successful in business. You know, Dwight, you started your business in the early 80s. And, and I have no had not one lost time accident on the farm. Yeah, and I think that's something to really be proud of. So. And, and I respect John. He's been in business a long time. I've watched him. Uh, he's done an excellent job of protecting his family and his, uh, living up to his obligation. And I would challenge him everybody in the business to live up to their obligation. You owe that to the people working for you. Absolutely. And the companies that are providing things to these people owe them the best or they should not expose them. Correct. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot of discussion as things go on so we'd love to hear back from you and uh, we'd like to uh, I guess continue this discussion later on that other topics come up and I'm sure when people see this on uh, the different social media platforms that uh, you know, we'll get the discussion going and the conversation going, you know, around the world about really just foam in general and, and looking at, uh, and we're always trying to find better ways of, oh, yeah. you know, for whether it's equipment, delivery of ice, you know, pumps, you know, monitors. I mean, we're, we're constantly trying to innovate, you know, through new ideas and, and new ways, you know, with ideas such as your, yourself and a lot of other people out there. So, you know, one day it may come about, but currently today, you know, we see nothing well, around the world. I welcome that, that, that day, but it, until then, we need to do what's, what's right and what's logical. Well, great. Again, I'm Chris Ferreira with U.S. Fire Pump here with uh, Dwight Williams and John Snyder. So, uh, again, love to hear from you and um, have uh, further discussions as we go forward. John, I'm Yeah, same here, Dwight.